Hiya. We are having a national, multi-sectoral, multi-stakeholder, multi-generational uh, conversation. If we say the word dialogue, our guest will walk out. <laughs> <laughs> Not all dialogue. Not of all dialogue. Not all dialogue. Yeah. There's a specific one that you're not boarding. Boarding, yes. You are not boarding to a yes, specific yes, one. Yes. So, Martha, good morning. Morning. Good to have you here again. I'm happy to be here. Always a pleasure. Mm. When you posted this on your social media, mm. the youth told you. Mama ni asa ni sawa lakini sasa unajua tutakuwa kwa ndege tukienda. The most hilarious responses to tweets that I've seen. Yeah. Some are saying tutaambia pilot aeke 94.4 kia spice tukienda. <laughs> Others are saying sasa nikifika eh, Russia. Nikutana na Putin. And listen who's your mother? And you're not on the flight. Nitaambia mama yangu kuna. And Martha is not on the flight. <laughs> But welcome to the conversation city we'll give you the day's proverb as usual our proverbs from this week come from the union of the comoros mm. where there are riches thieves abound if the riches are large the thieves are big where there are riches thieves abound mm. if the riches are large thieves are big interpretation what what comes to my mind is our Kenyan situation. Mm. Uh, our riches are big and the thieves are big. Yeah. So that's one way to see it. Mm. Yeah. And it could be anywhere else but it fits our situation. Mm. Yeah. Cities so proverbs this week are really provocative. <laughs> Just tell us tell Martha yesterday's proverb. Um, a slippery person is not a king. <laughs> That's how we started the week. <laughs> I think all those proverbs are for Kenya. <laughs> Because we are dealing with very slippery characters. Mm. Yeah, yeah. You know, City mm. yeah. went to those islands <laughs> in the Comoros. Huh? Yeah. The capital of the Comoros yeah. is Moroni. Oh. City Moron. is from Moroni. <laughs> <laughs> Which can can sound like moron. Mm, Moronic. Way, 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 way. All of them mixed up. Yeah. Martha, do you think mm. you know you've been in national leadership for yeah. decades now in this country? Yeah. Risen all the way to the very top. <clears throat> And now we are seeing a generation that's young. Yeah. That was not even con- conceptualized when you went into politics the first yeah. time yeah that is now here they are adults they're thinking they are looking they are reading they are consuming information and they're speaking and making sense and making a lot of sense yes do you think the leaders at national level your compatriots are understanding the message that's coming from the young people i think quite a number are tone deaf because the the young people are very very uh, they have clarity of mind their asks are very clear very precise but uh, those at the top think that they can meander and get away in a slippery manner the demands are about accountability they're about good governance is about implementing our constitution and the laws and running this country as a going concern not as a personal fiefdom and to benefit everyone not mm. a few they want to leave the dream of the contract Kenyans made the, for themselves mm. the constitution the social contract mm. yeah but you'd argue that those who are now in senior leadership were yeah. young ones and they were going and pushing for the same I actually saw a clip of uh, William Ruto insisting that the authorities were not going to stop coming to the airport you know them coming to the airport today he wants to stop people it is surprising that uh, to a, a person of my age I'm approaching 67 when you see people who tell you they were not born in 92 when I entered parliament they're talking sense they have a vision of what this country should be and uh, that makes me realize that the time 
to give way to this generation to steer the affairs of the nation is here. We should listen to them. It doesn't mean that there will not be people of my age there, but it's time that we largely gave way, you know, mm. to these people. And remember, even old days and even today, who are recruited to the army, to the police, to guard the country? It is not me. It's not my age mates. Mm. I cannot actually qualify to go for the recruitment. So similarly, it's not only for the jobs that need courage and whatever, even the jobs that need thinking. These people are at the best age to visualize what Kenya will be and to put it into effect. Mm -hmm. And they are largely not corrupted by the political environment. There are some of their age mates who are in parliament now and who are totally corrupted by the political environment. But the youth of the change movement today are youth who are sharp, who are patriotic, who have a clarity of mind and who know what they want. I've heard some of them speaking on um, television shows, on Twitter spaces, on many other places. And all I can say is, wow, <laughs> we better not let this moment pass. Mm. This is a unique moment. Kenya has an opportunity to transform. And it, the transformation worldwide is never led by the older generation. The older generation, there can be one in leadership, two, three. But the real engine of revolutions mm. is the youth. We better give way. And even as we say that, yeah. at the mo at the moment, mm. there's still this clamour and there's still the dialogues, one of which you said you're not bored in, yeah. where the um, older generation still yeah. feels as though they can be part of a broad-based government yeah. and that it is their position to yeah. hold. How do the two come into play when on one side we have, I mean, a we have a youth bulge in the country yeah. and we see from the same mouths, they're saying, you know, it's about time that things changed. It's not uh, a question. They have to change because this is the country that we are going to live in for the next odd number of years. But we still have this agitation for the people who've been in power for the last 30 years. Yeah. Wanting to form part of this government that came about as a result of this protest. What I think is that uh, it is not right for people of my generation to attempt to hijack the, the youth movement that is asking for transparency and accountability, that is saying things are so wrong, we need to go back to the reset button. Mm. We can only be spoilers. And it is in this respect. Last year, you remember, as uh, Azimio, we went to the streets. Mm. And a good chunk <clears throat> of Kenyans supported the movement. We were asking for cost of living as a number one. But we are asking also a political question, open the servers. We were called to dialogue. Hmm. Some of us reluctantly. Dialogue happened. We were arm twisted. We ended up getting nothing hmm. for the people. At the end of a whole one year, because the protests, the preparation for the protests began in January. Hmm. Uh, at the end of the year, December, they told us, now we are ready. Mm. The only outcome was how to form a new IEBC. The laws have now been <coughs> passed, but we never went to the streets because of IEBC. Mm. Mm. And the IEBC crisis was generated solely by Ruto, who sacked four commissioners because they said no to the tally that made him president. Mm. Criminalizing dissent. So that was not our issue. The fact that we abandoned the people's issue, were arm twisted to accept something less, makes us totally unfit to lead any other dialogue, especially a dialogue initiated by the people with clarity of demands. These people are not asking for any one person to be installed. It's mm. not about personalities. It's about issues. What I hear is about leaving our national values enshrined in Article 10, 
Everybody should have human dignity. Mm -hmm. We should obey the rule of law. People should participate meaningfully. And people of Kenya participated very robustly in looking at the finance bill 2023. Overwhelmingly rejected it. And nobody can doubt that because the media polls were showing us it's totally rejected. What did Parliament do? What did the executive do? Completely ignore the people. And this is the second round because 2023 it was the same. But this time our young people said enough is enough. They have pushed Ruto in a way he didn't think possible. And he thought by quickly saying he has dropped the finance bill, everything will be well. But even that is not an honest uh, withdrawal of the bill. Look at the fuel levy. It's gone up from 18 to 25. So the bill is still active. The proposals of the bill are active. Look at the way they are trying to reallocate money after in the proposed, in the supplementary, uh, supplementary estimates. Look at where the cuts are. The cuts are the essential services, basic needs of the people, education, health, agriculture, while they are leaving their money almost intact. We had a state house, one of the people working in state house going to parliament to demand 591 million for the employees of the office of the First Lady. William Ruto said he had dropped the offices of First Lady, Second Lady, and uh, Mudavadi's uh, spouse. So what is this we are seeing? It's taking people for a ride. So what I'm saying, when there is dialogue, you must set conditions for dialogue. Mm. Take, for instance, the 207 dialogue. There was violence. Yeah. Both Kibaki and Raila called off their troops. Raila, the people who were mobilizing all over the country in the, in the areas he had support, President Kibaki being in charge, getting the police to obey the law, mm. that helps us to have cessation of violence. Mm. What is happening today? People, our youth are still getting murdered, abducted, excessive use of force, Therefore, disobeying the law, even where the court says stop using tear gas, stop using poisoned water, stop using live bullets, they're still being used daily. So the conditions of dialogue, if he needed genuine dialogue, mm. he would set the climate by doing all the things that do not require dialogue, mm -hmm. obey the rule of law, cut out all unnecessary spending genuinely do not lie to us while at night you continue doing the things you know do not tell us that you've dropped 50 percent of advisors we are telling you advisors <laughs> would be members of cabinet yep. do not select incompetent team then you saddle us with advisors he would be looking at that he doesn't seem to be understanding what the demand is and that's why he would rather deal with politicians who make an arm twist. The Gen Z's are faceless, they are leaderless, he is not able to know whom to call. And that's the frustration that he's yeah. expressing. Yeah. The, the, the president spoke on Sunday yeah. and he said, you know what, this movement that's faceless, leaderless, everything less, yeah. has demanded that I drop the finance bill, I did it. Yeah. They have demanded that I, you know, I change the cabinet, I've done it, and now they are still talking more. I, I'm saying, can we then meet somewhere so I can understand what you're saying? I came to the Twitter space. They are not there. I, he's Eric, frustrated. Yes, he expressed frustration. Mm. But let's look at what he said he did. Mm -hmm. He said he dropped the finance bill. Did he? Yes. He said he had dropped it. But did he? Yes. No, I have just shown that uh, the <coughs> pure levy is active. He wrote Office a memorandum. Office of First Lady. Mm. You know. He, he wrote a memorandum to the, the Speaker of the National Assembly as he's required to do. And the Speaker has acknowledged receipt of it. Between him and the Speaker and the people of Kenya, we want to ask them who's fooling who. Our youth and the people of Kenya are not fooled. Mm. They can see life is continuing as before. Mm. He has his troops on the streets to abduct. You know, just only last week, a senior journalist was uh, abducted mm. in a most foul manner in a police station. 
we have so many children, not really children, youth. I'm calling them children as a mother. Yep. But we have so many people missing. Mm. You see? Mm. We have bodies being discovered in quarries. Mm -hmm. We have police abducting a young uh, person from a university and dumping him in a quarry. Mm. I mean, this is not a climate for, uh, negotiations. for negotiations. Let him do those things that are clearly provided for in the constitution none of the gen z demands are not part of what our social contract is in the constitution so it's all about good order yeah chapter 10 of the constitution and our foundational values in chapter 10 mm. our preamble which says the purpose of the constitution mm. is so that the state works for the, for the benefit of the people of kenya not for a few it's about chapter six on leadership on integrity. Which cabinet did he drop if he is returning, you know, the same old faces? So it's possible. Mm. Essentially, what we are saying is that the mm. time for dialogue or the time for discussion is not now, Martha. No, it's We're not. saying that there are certain things that need to be done and that can be done without you sitting around a table with a number of people. That you can do certain things right now, get those things off the table, and then let's even see if we can start to have a discussion. Is that what we're saying? Get yeah, your house and, uh, in order, essentially. And the discussion would not be about him incorporating people in government. Mm. The discussion Kenyans would like to have with themselves and he being a Kenyan, he can be taken to be part of it, mm. is how to go back to the reset button. Because the way I see it, the people of Kenya exercising their power under Article 1 have actually recalled the executive. Mm -hmm. William Ruto and his regime stand recalled. They have recalled parliament. They have no faith in it. And people don't seem to understand this does not require signatures. Mm. Signatures are required when a few people initiate a recall. Then you need signatures, which then go to the IABC, which also goes to court. But when the people are exercising their power directly, you don't go through any delegated institution. Mm -hmm. And you might ask, how may we know therefore that we have reached the threshold in numbers? Mm. Look at how people came out. 35 counties. And it could be more, but 35 are the ones the press was able to reach and amplify. It wasn't two or three people. Mm. It was multitudes like you've never seen before. Yep. Is this and what, mm. uh, I am sure even William Ruto actually acknowledged that he didn't withdraw the finance bill for fun. Mm. After chest thumping, this is a signal that he actually saw and understood. Does it, this form the basis of why you decided that you're not boarding? Because they're members of your own coalition who it would seem as, at this point, are kind of clamoring for some of these positions yes, today. Yes, I've seen people are hungry to be in the gravy train. But uh, what I'm saying is that NAC Kenya yeah. rejected the NADCO outcome. Mm -hmm. On the 7th of December, we had last year, we had a press conference. And uh, even long before that, we internally were pushing for cost of living. And we had agreed as Azimio that cost of living, if not addressed, will be the deal breaker. Mm -mm. So at what stage did we agree to sign off without cost of living? And you, you saw even the leader of DA, DP, DA, okay. 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 Yes, who was part of the negotiations refusing to sign. Yep. So you can see even up to that time, there, were, there was already push and pull. Mm. So there is no way we can be party to something that is going to actually water down the demands of the people. This country needs to go back to the reset button. Mm. Corruption has trebled. You can say we've always had that problem, mm. but where we have reached is just insane. They're eating the seed. If you look at uh, the finance bill uh, 2024, mm -hmm. and you look at the way the, the estimates are cast, you will see that the state has been repurposed to serve the political elite. Mm. You cannot be defunding education when you are increasing the funding of mm. the political elite. You cannot defund health. And remember, our health is already in shambles because of the same corruption. Mm. The amount of money they are spending on travel, on uh, hospitality, on offices of first, second, 
And if you allow me to call um, Madam Mudavadi's, uh, what, uh, Mr. Mudavadi's uh, spouse, third lady, mm. because he's, he looks like he's number three in the Ruto pecking order, that amount is enough to cater for the um, clinical officers who has been out. Mm. Yeah. It could also be, part of it could be applied for the JSS teachers. If you go to William Ruto's travel budget, acknowledged travel budget of 2023, the year that just ended, mm. eight, a whooping 18 billion. At what? 18. 18. And it's not on the budget. So they hide money in several places. <laughs> wow. The amount he used which you is know, acknowledged is 18 billion. Yeah, it's 18 billion. You know, globe trotting. Kibaki had very few trips, if you remember. Mm. Yet he was able to do wonders. Wouldn't we rather we created jobs locally instead of sending our people to be slaves elsewhere? And this regime is not even having any serious negotiations with the countries our people are going. Mm. There are no labor agreements. Why do we have to have 316 people dying in, in, in um, the Middle East. Mm. What are we doing about it? And so many others injured, mm. so many others coming back minus their salaries with horror stories. Yeah. You know, why can't we create, we are actually destroying jobs in Kenya when industries are closing, when SMEs are closing because an SME can employ so many people, whether two, three or ten. If so many are closing, we are destroying jobs. So what I'm saying, can we listen properly to what the Gen C's frustration is and address it and stop side shows? Yes. And to William Ruto, I'd like to tell him, it's a matter of time. You can't win this one. Kindly e listen. E e Menda, kindly listen to what the Gen C are saying. Take it seriously and don't ask what can you do. Just look at that constitution you opposed and which you swore by. You swore to uphold and defend. Mm. Act in a manner in the manner the constitution guides you to. City. Mm. You know the yesterday when we were discussing this matter and we're looking at what the youth of this country are demanding. If I may use a colloquial term, it is extremely grown up. Mm -hmm. Now, those of us who are older, mm. I think it's time for us to grow up because they are telling us things we don't particularly want to hear because we know they are right, but we probably didn't do our bit as they should. Mm -hmm. Maybe some of us couldn't. Mm -hmm. But they have collectively decided that, you know, these things that they have seen and witnessed and were not done, it's about time they did it. So, so really, it's, it's a strange thing where you find you're actually being led by the youth. But you know, it's not strange. Biblically, it is very sound. Mm -hmm. Because biblically, it states that as you get older, you will be led. Not you lead, you will be led. There's a time when you lead, yes. But as you get older, you will be led. And mm -hmm. just recognizing that this generational change is real and that the future actually genuinely belongs to these young Kenyans, these youthful Kenyans that we see, it is maybe difficult for some people to accept, but it's a simple reality. Either you accept it or it will roll over you. It's not really complicated. Mm -hmm. Yes, because it's here to stay. It isn't, it isn't actually going anywhere. But one of the things that uh, I have seen, we were discussing this in the earlier um, hour, and we are talking about government spending and how government should go about the business. And I asked this question. Who says we cannot live within the means of what it is that care collects? I think we can. Hmm. If you remember the Kibaki era, coming in, coffers are empty. He doesn't talk about it or waste time talking about empty coffers. Improves the collection of revenue. And for the first five years, 93% of our budget was self-funded. Only 7% came from partners. It meant that all the development of the first five years was our own money. It is possible. It is possible to address all our issues, including the debt issue, but we can't have our cake and eat it. If you're having money and a crisis in your home, mm. you address the crisis first. You address the essentials. 
the livelihoods of the you know your household mm. you don't go buying a car just because you dreamt that you should <laughs> have a car you don't take a holiday because you, you're so tired you address the issues first but here what we are doing we keep on yapping about empty coffers and coffers are never full because money comes in as we spend mm. you are collecting but you want us to only think about the empty coffers you found you want to even take away the food on our plates you know mm. take away ch our children's education take away their future it is possible to jipange na ile tukonayo it can be done it can be done and i saw the um, auditor general actually reconfirming to us again that we have lost a trillion to wasteful spending and corruption William Ruto said when he withdrew the finance bill that now he will have to borrow a trillion. Although the finance bill, he was only going to lose about 358 or mm. 368, whatever the, mm. the figure was. Now he was talking of a trillion. That trillion is within that budget because we budget, it's budgeted corruption. Mm. You know, rationalize and you will have all the money you need, but you can't have your cake and eat it. Mm. You cannot retain the very wastefulness the Gen Z are telling you to uh, stop. That is the, the only issue. You well, want to fill the bucket mm. and you're digging more holes into the sides, the middle, everywhere. To empty the same bucket yeah, as yeah. you're filling it. Yeah, yeah. But there are those who have said that this, and actually you have yeah. said this morning, that yeah. we are at a moment, yeah. a transformative moment. Yeah. And it's upon those in leadership to actually seize this moment. That has been said many times. That has been said, you know, William Ruto is being handed a clear moment to change the politics of this country, the governance of this country, that he could squander it. If you were president, you, Martha, today, yeah. and this was happening, and the people were speaking as they are speaking now, yeah. what would you do? Firstly, I wouldn't be a president who is misusing and uh, superintending over theft of the funds. But if a moment for any reason came like this, mm. leadership is not a title deed which you hug and refuse with. You can't keep on saying you were elected for five years. That mandate can be terminated. It can be recalled. I would give way. You cannot plunge a nation into turmoil knowingly. You must give way. What does and give way therefore, mean? William Ruto should give way. He's unable to carry out the changes that Kenyans through the Gen Z are asking. Let him give way. What does that mean? Let him let the people of Kenya turn the, the country the way they want to. Remember, we are exercising power under Article 1. Mm -hmm. It is only the Kenyan constitution, I don't know any other, that envisages a people's revolution. The people can actually form their own leadership when that time comes. So if William Ruto cannot make the changes being asked, he can resign. A recall ought to make any person who believes in democracy throw in the towel and say, I and my government we will exit. There will never be a vacuum. The constitution is there to guide us on what to do next. Parliament, likewise, should give way. A people's constituents assembly can be an immediate parliament. You know? I will not go beyond that, but there are steps. It is quite clear what people can do. You they have recalled the mandate. You are senior Power counsel. is back to them. Practically, how would this work? Today, we don't have IEBC. Yeah. Or are you saying that the president can give notice that I'll resign in December? No, no, no. When there's an IEBC. He needs to go like yesterday. Mm. And, and then what? 90 days will come and no, go without no. an IEBC. Imagine if he went today, there would never be a vacuum. The military would still stay in the bar barracks. The police would still maintain law and order. Mm. The civil service would continue, but the political appointees exit with the whatever. So in a ministry where there is a, a principal secretary, that one should go home. But immediately below him will be a career civil servant. servant. You see, 
And if you are asking who would ratify the names, even today, the names you already suggested have already been discussed. And you can see people have attached what they believe are the true resumes of those people. So give a name. If the people of Kenya wanted a constituent assembly, it is easy. They'll be able to make one, you know. They'll communicate. And if you are saying we can't see whom you are communicating with, who communicated with him when he withdrew the finance bill? Mm -hmm. The people. Through social media. Mm -hmm. Who communicated with him when he sacked his cabinet? So let us not say it can't be done just because it has never been done. Last year when we were saying that the people can, uh, should ex can exercise their power directly, people understood, but nobody had an idea how it would happen. It has now happened. Is there any argument about it? Mm -hmm. Even the communication channels are quite clear. Kenyans are capable of steering this nation and our youth have shown us that actually they are focused, they know what they are doing, mm. and they mean well for this country. And I call them Wenye Nchi. Mm. My age mates, mm. we are the Wananchi. Mm. Wenye Nchi are those youth who are whose lives are in the active stages. They are the ones getting families or with young families. They are the ones who really feel the bite of what is happening. You can imagine jobless, you have a kid in the house, or you have a future, you cannot even marry. I saw some of them discussing these issues mm. because you have nothing yourself, you know? So these are the people whose lives we are wasting through our bad ways. Mm. And the, I believe mm. they can do better than us. There still seems to be a call to have somebody yeah. who will come and will say, okay, well, this is what we want to do. Yeah. Is there a need for that? Because that has been the part of the conversation, that there needs to be a representation <laughs> of people that we can come and say, okay, fine. In August, we are going to make sure we do with this with uh, public debt. In September, in October. Later. Is it I necessary? think the strategy, I actually admire their strategy. Mm. If they had put forward leaders, either maybe they would have by now been abducted, if they are not willing to be, <laughs> to be co-opted and compromised, they could have been abducted. You see, we are living in dangerous times and with a regime that thinks that all you need is to use uh, excessive force. Identify the head. Yeah, so, so they are looking, they looking for a head to chop. Mm. And that is why at this stage, I admire their strategy to re remain leaderless and faceless. Mm. And tribeless. But when the time comes, when things have to be done, I am sure through the same means they have communicated to the nation and we have heard them loud and clear, they'll be able to communicate representatives mm. who then can move forward. Do you at yeah. any moment, Mother, yeah. fear either this <clears throat> moment being hijacked and then being steered into anarchy. No. I mean, you've been there. You've, you've been in political leadership in 92, going into 97, yeah. going into then 2007, and you saw what happened in 2007 very fast. Yeah. Do you fear this no. actually going south? I am saying that the way I've seen this movement, the clarity of thought, and they are not guided by greed because where you have leaders, you'll be saying they are seeking to replace us individuals. This is a movement focused on ideals, not on individuals. In 2007, the quarrel between PNU and ODM was purely about leadership. And you can see how soon we settled in government as bodies, mm. the moment positions were shared. We had an agenda, including youth agenda, which were never implemented. Only two things or three succeeded. Cessation of violence, political settlement, and finally the constitution. Fighting corruption, addressing youth issues, youth unemployment, mm. all and even completely resolving the humanitarian crisis caused by displacement. Mm -hmm. It's still a pending, you know, matter. It was never properly resolved. Mm. So all the people things except the constitution were cast aside. So I would say 207 and this time are totally different. Mm. The youth are not focused on power grab. But it could be hijacked. I mean, not them, yeah. but this movement 
could be hijacked the fears of it uh, i've actually uh, said on my twitter handle at some time mm. they should be wary of us the political class because we do get compromised we do get uh, co-opted so and that's why i'm admiring this method of remaining faceless and leaderless at this stage and at whatever stage we shall be in tomorrow the youth must always be the majority mm. focused youth not just any youth focused youth because we have youth who are wayward who are in this ruto regime and we have seen them we need focused youth okay and the youth i've seen in this movement from wherever where whenever they stand and speak or tweet you can really see that they have seriously thought about what is coming out of their mouths what do you say to the allegation and accusation that this is funded organized mayhem now um dr william ruto said it was the ford foundation mm -hmm. only for it to be re uh, reviewed uh, uh, revealed that one of the recipients of serious money from ford foundation is none other but the first lady so if they are funding is he also accusing the first lady's office of being part of the movement because they received a lot of funds his government has been receiving a lot of funding funding is not the issue mm. he is just hiding burying his head in the sand let him answer us a question the demands by the gen c which one of them is not real you know mm -hmm. Let us not be distracted from the debate at hand, the debate to transform Kenya, the debate for uh, uh, transparency and accountability, adherence to the rule of law. Let us not agree to be distracted to sideshows. That is what I would call a sideshow. Just like they think that propaganda against social justice activists of all ages is what will quell this. Let us focus. What are the demands? What are you doing about it? We refuse, we should refuse as Kenyans, and I refuse as a Kenyan to be distracted to engage in useless talk or even insults because they are hurling everything, including insults at people. Yeah. Mm. Mm. So today protests yeah. continue um, from what we've heard. Mm. We don't know what is going to happen today and not to be foreboding in any way but it would seem as though now that there's a hard stance that has come yeah. um, from uh, the president from government that look essentially i believe the words that he used were enough is enough um and not understanding maybe to an extent some of the things that you've said and some yeah. of the things that you know um the movement has called for and it looks as though there is a threat that, you know, we're going to shut this thing down yeah. if you continue. By is that a safe position to take? No, it's not a safe position. The threat from William Ruto, taking the words of the people, enough is enough. He's not in a position to tell us enough is enough. Like I said, leadership is not a title deed. You've been recalled. Go home. It is the people who can tell you enough is enough. We've given you work, you've been a position of trust, you've been unable to execute. Enough is enough, go home. That can only come from the people. When you are given a position of leadership, it doesn't make you the owner of the country. The people yeah. still <clears throat> own the country. So you are not in a position to say enough is enough. If you cannot meet the people's demand, you should be home already. And this actually indicates that it's completely tone deaf stop committing or encouraging police to commit murder abductions use high-handedness let the people express themselves if you're unable to solve the problems of the nation give way after all you've been recalled and your behavior of suggesting same names thinking you can have your cake and eat it actually indicates you're totally unsuited so do not shed more blood give way mm. let the country be renewed mm. and giving way for those who think that the core ruto must go preserves gashagua it is not true ruto is symbolizing his entire regime so for me ruto must go means the entire ruto administration together with his complement 
and I gave examples of political appointees, including uh, what are they called? Principal secretaries. Principal secretaries. Mm. I still remember permanent secretaries. Yes. Mm. Principal secretaries. They were permanent when they were civil servants. But now they are principal secretaries, political appointees who come with the leader. Mm. So that's what really it symbolizes. So let him go with this government. Let him honor the people. When you see an uprising and you realize you are the cause, mm. you honor the people. Otherwise, you cease to be honorable. Mm. Yeah, you honor the people by living. Those that have argued, yeah. they're actually even Ruto must go is yeah. speaking to not just William Ruto, yeah. the Shagua, and the Kenya Kwanzaa administration, yeah. speaking to the political class that has let down Kenyans. Yeah. That, you know, whether it's William Ruto, it's your principal Raila Odinga, it's you, it's Kalonzo, it's Musalia, it's all of you lot, we are done. You've had your 60 years, yeah. we are where we are. We won't change. I think that is stretching it too far. Mm. But yes, it does speak to the old order. But normally, the person you recall is not the man on the streets. You recall the person in authority. So let us first be very clear that they are recalling those in authority, the William Ruto administration. I have said here before that I personally believe that a majority of those who steer the country must be our youth who have integrity, but you can never have a country or a home of youth only. Mm. You must incorporate. But yes, the youth are speaking clearly with clarity that you have let us down mm. let the cv of every person whether young or old i have also demonstrated that some of the youth who are in the william ruto administration are rotten to the core so again not personalities mm. the individual mm. and their cv mm. that's where we must be otherwise if we go on ageism and say only the youth below 40 mm. you might get quite a rotten bunch of youth below Interesting characters. Yo, so <laughs> let us go more on the values and I'll see you say mm. that because even in a home, even the work, even your businesses, people always draw in the young and, and energetic to come and mm. support. We must give way. There will be remnants, but remnants that are vetted, mm. but we must give way. Martha, do you see a situation where Parliament, mm. who have now gone back to duty, yeah. actually doing the ask, performing the functions for which they were elected? If they were to perform, they would by now have filed a motion of no confidence against William Ruto. If they had had the Gen C. Mm. Remember, this is the same Parliament that gave a deaf ear in 2023, in 2024. This is the same parliament that has purported to vet and pass a largely incompetent government, incompetent and unsuitable chairs of parastatos. So if parliament had had and had a turnaround, they would be filing a motion of no confidence, not only in Ruto, but also in the speaker, who has uh, presided over not a parliament, but a marketplace. You know, mm -hmm. so if they can redeem themselves, we did redeem ourselves, uh, <laughs> I believe, during the IPPG by turning the direction the country was going. Mm -hmm. If they want to redeem themselves as an institution, but time is getting late, the and as closing. I've said, mm -hmm. they've also been recalled. Mm -hmm. Let us think very carefully and let us not sell market fear by telling people that if Ruto goes mm -hmm. Yami, the Yami will stay in the barracks. Mm -hmm. That's what the constitution says. Mm -hmm. The police will continue to Their maintain role. law and order. That's, and the that's... people exercising their powers in Article 1 mm. will know the next steps. I, I'm not here to prescribe. I didn't prescribe what is happening. We are dealing with a very intelligent lot. Very committed to their country. <coughs> Martha, yes. your yeah. principal, Raila, has been dragged into this whole conversation. Yeah. He supported dialogue. Um, he has faced yeah. the Gen Zs. What do you tell your principal? I think, uh, to his credit, he has now said he is ready even to forfeit his candidature at AU. Which means he is free now. He has freed himself from being arm-twisted. 
and it is better even belatedly to stand with the people of Kenya than to stand with the oppressor. His troops in the coalition, the principles had sort of left him, but he has changed course, and that is very important. He has said nothing is too great than the nation of Kenya. Mm. That's what I hear him say when he says he doesn't have to go to AU. That now brings the opposition together to say, do what Kenyans are asking. Mm. Yeah. Have you had a one-on-one -on -one with him? Uh, not lately. Not lately. Are you, are you seeking him out? He's your principal. No, no, he's all. also my friend. What's happening. He's yeah. also my friend. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He's been busy. But I know now he, uh, he now that he has said he is not focused solely on uh, whatever, we'll be able to talk. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we talked not too long ago, and we'll be able to talk again. The lines are open. R um, Raila is one person who never closes his lines mm -hmm. to anyone, mm -hmm. no matter what. How about former President Uhuru Kenyatta? Uh, that one, uh, he's not that easy to get, but he's also a friend. Yeah, but you know, he's been traveling a lot. Yeah, okay. so it's not as easy to get. But Raila is local most of the times. So if I wanted to talk to him, I can even pass by for a cup of tea. There you go. Yeah. Martha Karua, party leader, NARC Kenya. <laughs> Raila Odinga's running mate in 2022 has been our guest. We've been talking about the reason why she says no to dialogue as has been proposed by the president. This is the Situation Room. The only way to start your day.